Hey y'all, so today we're going to talk about camera stacking. And this is specifically a capability in the universal render pipeline where you use camera stacking to layer the output of multiple cameras and you create one single combined output. Um, so why would you want to do this? One example might be a split screen rendering to a single output uh, if you have a multiplayer game. Uh, there are actually a number of reasons why you may consider this, rear view mirrors and other things like that. Uh, but let's go ahead and talk about the why. So I'm going to start off with talking through why would you use this, which render pipeline, and talking through a few other caveats of when you would and wouldn't use this. Then I'm going to go over into the editor and show you how we use this practically in a scene. So the first thing is why only URP? So why not high definition render pipeline as well? It's because URP is designed for flexibility and scalability across multiple devices, mobile to desktop, and its render is really modular and stack based. So you can easily overlay multiple camera outputs like a UI camera, an effects camera, a minimap camera. The camera stack feature is essentially a compositing system inside URP's forward renderer. It blends the results of multiple cameras into one frame. In HDRP, the idea is that it is designed for physically based high fidelity rendering, meaning that it focuses more on compositing multiple full frame renders in HDRP that would be very expensive and could easily break lighting consistency, exposure, and post-processing. So what would you use in HDRP? I'm not going to cover it in this video. Uh, at length, but I'll say at a high level, what you would use in HDRP are things like custom passes, render textures, visual environment layers, and a combination of that with scene layers, culling masks, and a few other techniques, but particularly looking at custom passes with HDRP. So with URP, why would you use a camera stack instead of a render texture is kind of the next question. The short answer here being, You'll use a camera stack more so when you want to render multiple cameras to render into the same frame efficiently, or if you want to layer effects or UI, or if you don't need a physical texture asset for later use. You'll use a render texture when you need the rendered output as data, like to project it, display it on a mesh, uh, or process it later, or if you need different render settings, materials, or lighting for the secondary camera. So then if you extrapolate that further and say, well, wait a minute, you said that this is good at UI. Well, why would you use this in a camera stack and use UI instead of a UI document with UI toolkit as is standardly recommended? The quick rule of thumb there is if your UI lives in the world, if it's going to be using depth or shares effects and is diegetic, you'd use a camera stack. If it exists separately from the world and is flat on a screen and is non-diegetic, then you would use a screen space UI document. So with all of that said, hopefully that clarifies a bit of why you do this when you leverage it, uh, but it's a really nice intuitive way to approach layering render techniques in the URP pipeline. So I'm gonna close out of that window and let's go ahead and pull up our editor. So I am in Unity 6.3 beta right now, but anything in 6 should do just fine here. If we come over and look at our main camera, the very first thing that we're going to see is probably three core settings that we're going to play with. One is a render type. One is the rendering layer with culling masks, and one is a stack. So I'm going to close up the environment and the output, and we'll just leave these three open. So in looking at this, we have either base or overlay. So your base camera is your main camera. It's kind of, if you're thinking about cameras as a stack and the final camera in the stack is what all the others are layered in front of, that's what your base is. That's the base of the stack. And it is the piece that everything will eventually feed out to that singular base camera. Each overlay camera is a separate camera that exists within the scene, and each of those overlay one on top of the other in a stack where you create a list of these cameras that you can then sort and use in different ways. One thing to note is that this can cause a significant amount of overdraw if you start doing things like applying 
different post-processing effects to each of your cameras all stacked on top of each other with all of these different effects happening. So you do need to be a little bit careful about how you use all of this, but let's go ahead and create a second camera so that we can see how these apply. So if I come in here, right click and go into camera, I'll make this camera one and I'll go ahead and make another camera and we'll call this camera two. All right, so now that I have camera one and camera two, I'm going to turn camera one to the left. I'm gonna turn camera two to the right and I'm going to have the main camera look straight. So from here, what I can do is create a 3D object and let's say it's a sphere. I'm gonna scale this sphere way up so that my camera can easily see it. And then I'm gonna notice if I go into game view, that I don't see anything. And that's because game view is actually trying to prioritize a different camera. So let's go ahead and change these cameras to be overlay cameras. So I'm gonna shift select them both, come over to render type and go to overlay. All right, so what that should mean then is we position our camera, we see the sphere, we're good to go. Then we have camera one, which is kind of looking downward, so it's even a little bit different. Let's say here I wanna create a 3D object that is a capsule. All right, so the capsule is now where camera one can see it. And then the last thing that I wanna do is come over to camera two, and I wanna create something else in front of it. So let's do a cube, and that looks pretty good. So now what I wanna do is actually take this cube and slide it to the right. And then I wanna take this capsule and I'm going to slide it to the left. And now what we should see is all three of these together, but we're not going to see that when we first go to game. And that is because we've not set these cameras up in our list, in our stack. So let's go ahead and go over into the main camera, come down into stack, and I'm going to add camera one, and I'm gonna add camera two. And we can now see that all three are here. It looks like the cube needs to come up a bit. And now we can see all three rendering the same despite it being three different cameras looking a different way. So let's look at one more example of how you'd use this. So I'm going to delete out camera one, camera two, and everything but our sphere. And now what I'm going to do is take this sphere, duplicate it, and on this sphere, I want to create a new material that's going to be red. So now if I go into the base map, I'm gonna turn that red. Then if I go into sphere one, I'm going to say that new material comes over here and that new material will be blue. So we now have two different spheres that are overlaid on top of each other. Just for uh, cleanliness sake, I'm gonna change the name of this material over to blue. And now what I wanna do is take sphere one, which is going to be blue sphere. And I wanna take sphere two, which is going to be red sphere. And I wanna set each one on a different layer. So I'm gonna add a layer that is red. And then I'm going to come over to blue and I'm going to add a layer that is blue. Now, once you've added these layers here, you still need to go back up here and, and change them. That's just one of the many ways that you can add layers, uh, but make sure that your layer has actually moved. Now that it says red or blue, I can take my name, main camera, and I'm gonna duplicate it, and I'm going to move this camera to the right. Let's say this is like a split screen or something like that. If I take the other camera and I move it left, the idea will be that I want one of these to be my base camera, but that happens to render the red player. And I want one of these to be my overlay that will render the blue character. So now if I come over here and I set the base red rendering calling mask to nothing but red, and I set the blue calling mask to everything but blue. And I make sure that this overlay blue is set to overlay and is added to the list. We'll now in the game view, see both characters here, each one with a camera that's focused on it. And if you wanted to, you could even put the camera underneath the asset so that it would follow the character around as you moved around the scene. 
but each one now has a camera controlling its own stuff that it has going on. But you're rendering it all out to one base camera. Now, an interesting thing here is post-processing. So the other way that this is leveraged often would be coming over into where the blue sphere is. And let's say I create a volume and I want this to be a box volume. And we'll just say that this box volume is a lot bigger than that. And let's just say it will cover one camera, but it will not cover the other. So in doing it this way, I could now come in here, make a new volume profile, add override, post-processing. Let's do a film grain. So then I'll take the intensity up to one. I'll make it large so it's easy to see. And then I can have that affecting just the red ball and not the blue. So because this is existing on the red camera, which is right here, it's going to have that post-processing effect happen here on the base camera. Now, if I came over here into the blue camera and I create a, another box volume, then I'll move over this way. And this one instead, I have another new profile. I'm gonna add an override for post-processing and I'll make this one bloom and let's say the intensity is off the charts and the threshold is very low. And you can see how now the blue volume is applying the bloom that impacts both of the spheres. So as your stack layers one on top of another, that's kind of how you can think about this working is that anything that's on your base is going to show last and anything above that will layer down through the stack. Again, don't get carried away with this, but it's just to illustrate the point of how these cameras work. Again, this is a really easy way to start stacking up different visuals from different cameras that will all render to the same output. So I've shown a quick demo here that's how to do that with multiplayer or how to have multiple different cameras all showing what they see on one screen. Um, could be part of a puzzle or, or a mechanic in a game like that. Get in here, try it out. Again, it's only in URP, so check it out with URP. You can build out to a mobile device with that and start to see how you could use this tool for yourself. I hope this was helpful, that you're having a great day, that you like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see y'all in the next one.